don't like it. It's, it's no, no numbers. There's no pictures. There's no videos. There's no, no gameplay. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yo, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everyone's having a good day so far. Today, we are going to get back into Sunrise Stories. Uh, today, we're going to be going over Ancestry. So, this story actually does have a really good theme to it. Um, at least, I think so. This is another one where I was like, there's so much different art of the dwarves and miners and the mining job in general um, from TCG art and all that. And I wanted to do a story based off of that. So, there was... A thought I had in my mind where I was like, you know, Dark Sheet, he's a dwarf, and he started this whole Gloam invasion. I was thinking in my head, are the dwarves going to be, you know, I, I, I've I mentioned it in a couple of these stories, how people are like, oh, you can't trust those dwarves. Oh, we heard a dwarf did this. We heard a dwarf did that. And there's been all these rumors going around, and I wanted to write a story of like, what do the dwarves think of the whole situation? Like, what's their whole thought on this? Because like, throughout all the stories, you don't hear a dwarf go, hey, that's rude, or hey, you shouldn't say that. So we're going to go over that. We're going to be like, hey, what do the dwarves think about this whole situation of Dark Cheat and all this? But this story is going to be told a little differently. I wrote this a little, it's a little crazy, but you got to follow along with the images more than the actual text. It's weird. I'll, I'll kind of explain it as we go. But basically, there's a conversation going on between two people. There's also actions in the imagery going on in the background um, that uh, that are kind of depicting the whole story as well. So let's uh, let's get into ancestry. Snow Hill felt a lot colder today. Usually it was chilly here and there, but today it was definitely freezing. I could feel the frostbite on my fingertips, and I couldn't wait to get into the quarry. When I entered, I saw the crew was already hard at work and said. Well, by the looks of you lot, it seems you prefer the ground beneath our feet to the snowstorm outside. The crew began singing a tune to mine along to, one I was very familiar with. My second command approached me and said, Burin, good to see you in the mines today. I assume you'll be taking lead down today lead today down the mine shaft, unless I'm wrong. So this is Burin. By the way, that's an actual named dwarf. Like there's not a lot of named dwarves. This was one of them. And then I named the other, this dwarf. This is going to be kind of another main character, but I named him Wells. Not his actual name, but I didn't make it up. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. I laughed and said, you'd be wrong, Wells. I have to discuss some important business with a friend of mine upstairs. I want you to lead today's expedition. He gasped and said, you really want me to lead? I won't let you down, chief. You have my word. I smiled and said, I believe you won't, although I would ask that you take our newest hire, Spruce Wainhammer, along for the bride. So, this car this dwarf's actually named, funny enough, just a random dwarf. He's named. That's his actual name. I didn't make that one up, so, yeah, let's keep going. He sighed and said, and here I thought you were giving me free reign over the mine shaft. Babysitting wasn't in the contract, sir. I shook my head and said, on the contrary, it's important that we give our entire crew the chance to prove themselves, no matter who they are. He nodded and said, all right, I'll show him the ropes. I smiled and said, good, I'll still be keeping an eye on things from up top, so don't let me down today. He nodded and took the crew on the expedition. I went upstairs to the office where I could watch over the crew and get to work on my foreman duties. Today was even more important as I wanted to discuss business with the Sacred Grove historian. I opened the door to see my old friend reading one of the books I had on my shelf. He looked up at me, then at the viewing window and said, quite the view you've got there, Burn." I shrugged and said, It's not really about the view, Edwin. It's about the work that gets done outside of it. Um, so this, funny enough, um, the I don't know if like the artist um, Edwin Rosell named this character after himself. I'm not sure, but the dwarf is actually named Edwin Goldstory. Crazy. I know, what a coincidence. I thought that was kind of wild that there's two Edwins in this, in this whole Sunrise Stories dealio, but uh, yeah. Coincidence. Let's get to it. Um, it's not a, It's not really about the view, Edwin. It's about the work that gets done outside of it. He nodded and said, ah, At least you know the value of your crew. There's a lot to be learned from the work that gets done in these mines. 
I nod and said, You wouldn't believe it, but I trust these men with my life. I wouldn't trust anyone outside of here with something so fragile. He continued to read and ask, So, what is it you want to discuss with me? So again, um, just keep, keep in mind, you gotta follow the, the, both the imagery and the text are telling you two different stories here. So, just wanted to mention that just because it's gonna be kind of hard to like when I'm reading and then like, you know, you see the imagery like, oh boy. But the imagery is actually telling the story of like the, the crew that's mining that's on this expedition and then there's another story going on behind the imagery. So the, Im like most of the stories have been told like um, the imagery is kind of depicting the text as well. The text is not really depicting what's going on in the image. You know, it's, it's a little, this is a little different, but I wanted to try this. So yeah, let's keep going. I cleared my throat and asked, do you, do you remember the events that occurred last year? He nodded and said, of course I do. I wrote down everything while I was trapped in my home. I looked at him and asked, trapped? He looked and said, well, it wasn't the most pleasant experience. I could see everything from outside my window. What I saw wasn't something I had ever seen before. I crossed my arm and asked, could you elaborate? He pulled out a journal with the title, Energies, inscribed on it. He cleared his throat, then read from a page and said, What I saw outside of my home has only been known about through the memorial cabins. It was all myth until I saw a glow of energy come to life. While we know gleam, the energy that powers our warp stones to be real, I've never seen gloam in Sacred Grove. I was stunned by what he said to me. I sat down and asked, So, the gloam comes to life. How? He shrugged and said, well, besides what I saw, I couldn't really say. If you know something I don't, it's best you let me know now. Um, funny enough, so just talking about the image real quick, um, this dwarf is depicted in almost every of the mining job art for TCG, which is why I built one character off of this, and I thought I could tell a story with all the imagery um, behind the text, like not even worrying about the text, just I'm, I was hoping the imagery could tell a story, and I think I was right because it's wild. They like they didn't give this guy a name; they were just like this dwarf is doing all of the mining. <laughs> so just kind of kind of wild how it all fell together. But uh, yeah, let's keep going. I sighed and said, "I went down to Sanctuary recently and heard some of the residents talking about last year. One of them said a dwarf was behind all of it." He looked up from his book and said, well, That doesn't seem right. No one in the grove can harness that energy, let alone a dwarf. So again, um, the rumors that have been going on that a dwarf started all of this. Going back to that. Because um, Burren found out that, hey, this rumor's going around that a dwarf has done this. So let's keep going. I stood up and walked over to the window then said, This is what I want to discuss. I don't think it matters if it's possible or not, but the fact that everyone thinks a dwarf caused all of that is concerning. He scratched his beard and said, Why would it matter? One person doesn't define us as what he did, even if it was true. I sat and said, I'm worried, Edwin. Worried that all we've built here is going to fall apart because of some rumor that may or may not be true. He took off his glass and said, Look, I get it. We've struggled to get to where we are, and you're scared because we're going to get treated differently because of some crazed lunatic who happens to be a dwarf. I shook my head and said, It's not just that. We've never had it easy, and I just don't want to see my crew lose faith in their craft. Every day they sacrifice their lives down here to see it all go to waste one day because of some rumor. It would be detrimental to all of us. As I said that, I could hear something from the mines. I looked down and saw Wells hollering as loud as he could. He pointed to the mine and exclaimed, Chief, we hit the mother load! I could hear the cheering from the viewing room. It's been too long since we've seen... Since we've... <laughs> Goodness me. Editing again. I thought I could go through without editing. Scene. Oh, God. Had? Oh no. Oh no. There we go. Perfect. I'm gaming. Viewing. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> um, 
it's been too long since we have that many crystals seeing the look on their faces made me proud so yeah the again the images depicting this whole story behind the text and now it's coming to the forefront being like hey chief we have the mother load while they're talking about hey this dwarf could ruin um dwarven kind so that's a story i wanted to bring up because like there's a possibility that hey this dwarf could just ruin everything we built all because of something he did so i thought it was an important point to bring up and it's something i might bring up again but i don't know if i will um i think i could just leave it here but anyway let's keep going edwin got up from his seat and said look burn i don't think you'll have anything to worry about no matter what your crew or our race goes through, we'll get through it together. I smiled and said, you're right. I think I got worried over nothing. Whatever that dwarf was capable of in the past is a matter now. In that moment, I could hear the crew sing in a tune so loud it made the crystals in the mine shine so bright. Whatever was next for us, I knew it was going to be a bright future. So, that is the second to last story of Sunrise Stories. Uh, we're going to get into the last one in the next video, but yeah, that was kind of a short one. It's something I did want to talk about, though, because I thought it was important. Like, hey, Dark Cheat did all this stuff in this Gloam Invasion. Um, how does it affect Dwarven Kind? Because, like, you know, if a human started the whole invasion, I mean, I don't even know if that would affect humankind, because, like, I think, like, it depends, because I think there's more humans and pixies than there are dwarves, you know, so... I thought it was uh, super important to bring up, but um, yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. If you did, I appreciate it a ton, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!